Hey, my name is Milan, and in this video, I will show you how I'm going to upgrade my .NET 9 project to .NET 10 in a matter of minutes, and I'll share a couple of tricks along the way that are going to make this easier for you with the coming .NET versions. So .NET 10, which is the latest long-term support release from Microsoft, has been out for about a month now, and I'm assuming that a good chunk of you has already upgraded their projects to .NET 10, but there's always developers, and I think this is still a majority now, that are late to the party. So in this video, I'll show you what it took to upgrade my somewhat complex .NET 9 application to .NET 10. As a bonus, I'm also going to talk about the new SLNX format, the solution format using XML, but it's going to be a bit later in the video. Here's my .NET 9 application, and I'm opening this from the latest Visual Studio 2026 which is required if you want to run .NET 10. So what I want to highlight first is the five projects that I have in the source folder. Let's start from the web API and notice that I don't have a .NET version specified here. And this is true for all the other projects in this solution. They are either empty or just contain project references and NuGet package references. You won't find the .NET version anywhere. That also stands true for the test project. So where is the .NET version specified? Well, there's a file here in the solution items folder called directory build props. And this is where I actually specify my target framework, which right now is .NET 9. So this is the first thing I wanted to show you, the directory build props file. We've had this available since I think 2017 and onward. So it's been available for almost a decade now. And what it allows you to do is to customize your build per folder, or you can have one central build props file on the solution level, and that allows you to customize the build for the entire solution and all the projects inside, which is exactly what I'm doing here with specifying the target framework for all the projects in my solution. I also have some other things like implicit usings, nullable reference type, then we have some things for static code analysis. And just having these things centralized here allows me to remove them from the project files in the solution. Also, whenever I add a new project, I can just fall back to the centralized configuration that I have here. So what do we do to upgrade to .NET 10? I just update the target framework, and we're basically done. Well, not quite. We have upgraded the target framework for all of the projects, but this now introduces a couple of new issues that we're going to have to solve. For starters, the Docker file that I have in my web API is targeting .NET 9. So I can update this also from Visual Studio by right-clicking my web API project, and I can say add and then container support. And this will open up a window where I can choose Docker file as my container build type, and we're going to choose .NET 10 as the version. I'll click OK, and now this is going to override my existing Docker file. So you can see the images here are now targeting .NET 10, and you can also find the previous version of the file present here if you want to include that in the source control. So we've updated our target framework. I also update my Docker file and notice that I don't have any changes inside of my project. So I'm going to close them down. Now going back to my program file, it seems like everything compiles, but when I actually try to build this, I'm going to run into quite a bit of problems. Part of those are going to be code analysis warnings, which I can easily fix by either fixing the problem or deciding that I want to ignore them and adding a rule inside of my editor config file. And the second problem that we run into is mismatches between NuGet packages. Now this one is a bit more critical, so let's see how we can solve that. Now you may have noticed there's another props file in my solution called directory packages props. And what this allows me to do is implement central package management. So this is a feature that we've had from .NET 6 and onwards. And basically you define a central file called directory packages props, where you define your package versions. Inside of your projects, you only reference the NuGet packages that you need, and you manage the versions in one place. Now, this is really helpful because it saves you from merge conflicts if you're referencing the same NuGet package in multiple projects, and you could also run into a problem of having different versions in different projects. But in this example, you can see how everything is nicely organized inside of my packages props file, and now we are going to have to update this. Now I'm going to right click on my solution and say manage NuGet packages for solution. I'll go to updates and now this is going to list out all the NuGet packages that need updating. I can also include any pre-releases. This is pretty common if the release is still fresh as we are only a month away from .NET 10 and then you can decide what you want to update. Now from my experience the biggest cause of trouble is usually EF core and the various providers that it supports. In this case, I'm using Postgres, 
and the Postgres provider doesn't exactly follow the Microsoft release schedule, you can see that one dependency I have, EF Core Naming Conventions, is still in a preview release. Well, this is actually a release candidate, but I'm going to select all the packages and I'm going to omit a couple of them the Visual Studio Azure Container Tools targets, Serilog, and everything else looks good. And now I'll try to update all of these NuGet packages in bulk, and let's see what's going to happen. I'll have to accept a couple of terms here, but sooner or later you can see that this fails and we get into some problems. So this is the part where you still have to manually take a look at what you have in your packages props and possibly bump some packages yourself. Or another thing you can do is always just, for example, select all packages and try to update them again. Now, there are other options. There's an upgrader tool in Visual Studio that you can install and it's going to help you update to some new features. One of those is actually central package management. It's going to scan all of your projects and allow you to update to the latest version. So it looks like I've managed to update all of my NuGet packages. And now if I take a look at my packages props file, you can see that everything is now targeting the latest versions of the respective NuGet package and when it comes to my individual project files, I didn't need to make any changes. So all of the project files remain untouched and the only changes that you're going to see inside of your source control are going to be so far in the directory packages props file, the directory build props file and the docker file which we've updated to target.net 10. Now if I try to build the solution again, you can see it's still failing. I'm getting a code analysis warning here. So let's see if I can suppress this locally, for example, with some pragma comments. And I'm also getting a builder. Let me see what that is about. So this looks like a breaking change inside of my code. So I'm not going to fix this right now. I'm just going to comment out the problematic parts and check if everything is going to build. I'm going to run the build again and it's going to fail. And the reason for this is I suspect some cached files that are present in my solution folder. So the simplest way I found to solve this is just restarting Visual Studio and everything should work fine. And I'm going to also use this opportunity to discuss the new solution file format called SLNX. So if I open the current solution file, you're probably familiar with this. If you've ever had to solve a merge conflict, you know the pain. And this file describes the contents of my solution. It lists the solution folders, the projects, and where they can be found relative to the root folder. And then there's a bunch of these UUIDs which represent the project references. And all of that is pretty complicated. So Microsoft came up with an updated version of the solution file. They call it SLNX and it's based on XML and it's actually pretty similar to what the project files look like right now. Now, when it comes to upgrading to SLNX, I'm going to show you two simple options and then you can decide which one is best. For the first one, I'll go back to Visual Studio and what I have to do here is select my solution file, click on the file menu item here, then go ahead and click save clean architecture SLN. We're targeting the solution file and I want to save this as, and then from the drop down, there's a new type that you can choose called XML solution file or SLNX. You want to pick this and then click save and you'll be able to see the new SLNX file inside of your root folder. Here's what it looks like when I open this in VS Code and you can see that it's quite a bit more simple than the old approach. So we now have an XML element called solution and this contains everything inside. We have a couple of folders, the solution items and the files it contains, the source folder and the projects it contains, the test folder and the respective projects, and then there's the Docker Compose project. And I just keep asking myself, why did it take them so long to implement something like this? And why this wasn't possible, let's say 10 years ago? I didn't really dive too much into the announcement for this new solution file format. So I guess there might be some lore there that I'm missing, but nonetheless, we have this now. And I do recommend that this is your default solution file format going forward. I still show you two options for upgrading to SLNX. I showed you the manual approach from Visual Studio. There's also a simple approach from the CLI. You want to open a command line at the root folder where your solution file is, and you're going to type in the command .NET SLN migrate. I'm going to hit enter, and I made sure to delete the SLNX file previously. And you can see that a new SLNX file is now created in my root folder, and it's going to function just the same. So you can click that, open your solution in Visual Studio, which is what I'm going to do now. And you can actually see that the startup in the new version of Visual Studio is pretty fast, at least compared to the previous one. And what I'm going to do now as Visual Studio is starting up is force it to build my project just to make sure that our migration to .NET 10 is successful. So let's see if the build is going to succeed. 
or I'm going to get another warning and it looks like it succeeded. So now I'm ready to push this out to my server and release an update to my customers. A couple of further improvement points are going to be probably updating my CI CD pipeline to target the correct .NET version, but I want to comment on where we are at right now. So imagine that it's November 2026, .NET 11 or whatever they're going to call it has just come out and you want to update your project to target this new .NET version. So you will open your directory build props, change your target framework and boom, all of your projects are now targeting the new version. Then you go to your directory packages props and update your NuGet packages, fix any breaking changes that you run into and you're basically good to go and you're running the latest .NET version in a matter of a couple of minutes. So if this was helpful and you want to see how to set up the build props file and the packages props file completely from scratch, I recommend that you check out this video next. Make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm so this gets recommended to more .NET developers. Thanks a lot for watching and until next time, stay awesome.